All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Everything's good. Permagrand's on. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, and faith abound. Welcome to Fast Track Lesson Number Three. How's everybody doing tonight? Did y'all have a perfect day? 17th perfect day for Kim Danky. Way to go, Kim. I'm going to try to catch up with you this month. Heather's saying she can't hear very well. Can y'all hear me okay? I want to make sure you can hear me before I get started. Sometimes I'm back here, so make sure I'm loud enough. Yo! What up? All right. Good to have you. So my name is Travis Martin. This is lesson three. Just briefly, we may have some people that come tonight for the first time. Please don't run off because this is lesson three. We start the, you need to learn this by osmosis. We start these sessions every week, beginning on Monday. We do lesson one, two, three, and four and install fast track upon the hearts of every willing and wanting one that will come. But it will benefit you to even hear lesson three a couple of times. We want to get you through the week, take the test, pass test, earn the fast track badge, and get the proper lifestyle installed upon your heart. Are y'all ready? We don't need diets. The first three letters of the word diet spell what? Die. Anything we start with and we can't stick with forever is just a waste of our time. So, yeah, yeah, everything that we, I, I tried it all, and uh, it didn't work. But Shibboleth works if you don't treat it like a diet, if you treat it like a lifestyle, a practical, sustainable, and fun lifestyle. And, you know, the obesity epidemic is getting worse and worse and worse. Do y'all see that with your own eyes to know that I'm not just giving you some statistic I got in my wellness journals I read? It's, it's getting, it's, it is terrible, y'all. It's terrible. Uh, I thought it was terrible when I started in this industry. I was a victim of it myself. And here we are today. And I, I would have thought 20 years later that we would at least have a handle on it as a, as a people. But it's out of control. So much so now that we're normalizing poor health. Are y'all aware of that? We're normalizing poor health. Now, I'll get to the lesson in just a minute. I'm going to start off a little bit with what's on my heart. But we are normalizing poor health. It's almost that we have the attitude, if we can't beat them, join them. And we're better than that. Do y'all agree? We're better than that. We're to be uncommon. Now, I don't know anyone's uh, relationship with the Lord here. I know I feel the least amongst you, not a good man, not a bad man, but I'm not a good man either. But I love the Lord Jesus and I let him work on me and do surgery on me every day on my heart. And um, I just know in my old bad heart, good heart, when the Lord's got hold of me, I just know that we're better than this. Don't you, Charles? We are the children of the Most High God. And he does not want his bride whining, complaining, sick, sick and tired. Nothing is going to change until in our mind and heart, we change. We can search the world over and thought I found true love. You may add another diet and you were gone. Yeah, we're right. We we can look for the shiny objects and I get it. I get it, everybody. And I'm not really even talking to most of y'all. Y'all are doing good. But I want a, a cautionary tale. A cautionary tale. When we look in that mirror and we have a level of disgust and we want to change, if we've got 100 pounds to lose, how quick we want to lose it. We want to lose it overnight. 
with little effort, it's not going to happen. Let me tell you my story. And my story is not even the average story. We have clients who have really superseded anything that I have accomplished with this great program. But I lost 44 pounds in six weeks. I lost over 100 pounds in less than six months. I come off all prescription medications because the Lord blessed me and I made up my mind. Now, before that, I had expended all kinds of energy searching for every quick fix I could, everything from Slim Fast to Atkins to Dexatrim to the purging myself. I tried all of that. I expended tons of energy looking for instant results. And it left me hopeless, hapless, and feeling helpless. If I had taken that same energy and applied it toward learning this program and going on and doing what I needed to do to get it done without complaint, I would have saved years of quality in my life. At what point here do we stop comforting ourselves with food and confront ourselves with the truth? Now, if you're new here, you're like, I didn't come for this. Bear with me. It'll get more positive. I'm going to give you a way out. But I just want just a minute of confrontation because we are normalizing obesity. Now, there's nothing wrong with loving oneself. In fact, I can find something beautiful about every single person. But when a person can no longer find something beautiful about themselves and they no longer feel good about themselves, it's time to fix it. And you might think that you're going to do it when you have more time or you might think that you're, you're going to do it by yourself. But if you haven't done it by yourself until now, you're probably not going to do it by yourself later. You need a helping hand. And that's what we have these classes for. Sasha and I, many of our members like Kim Danke, our team, we want to help you. We want to support you. We want to care for you. We want to teach you. We want to put an end to these predatory weight loss programs that have done you nothing but harm. Let's stop the madness tonight and let's keep learning together and taking one day at a time and having fun with it, okay? So get your why, come up with that why, find your reason, find your reason, hey, Rebecca, dig deep. And let's get this done. Let me ask you this before we get into tonight's Category 3, Category 5 foods. Is it our reasonable service to take care of our temple? Give me about 10 minutes tonight to set this up. Let me ask you all this. This has everything to do with weight loss. Everything to do with weight loss. Do you believe? in God? Do you believe in the power of God to help you change? Or is that just something you think you ought to believe because you was raised that way? Now, I've had to do this same soul searching. Let me ask it again. I want you to consider it honestly. If you're struggling with your weight, you can't seem to break the enslavement, and you're not sure if God's big enough to help you with it, you don't feel worthy. That's part of it. Worthy in Jesus. You're worthy. I'm going to ask that one more time, and I want you to deeply consider my question. Is God something or someone 
that you really truly believe in and want to live for? Or is that just something that you think you ought to believe? Think about it. Because here's the next question. When you see someone outside of the food addiction realm, they're addicted to other things. Now, you be honest right now. This is going to sting a little bit. When you see people addicted to other things, alcohol, drugs, let's take pornography. Ew. By the way, we're adults here. Let's put the kids to the side for this particular topic. Pornography is destroying more lives than almost anything that I can think of. We could talk all night about what pornography is doing to mostly men, but women too. How it's desensitizing us and our relationships and messing up our dopamine response and all kinds of things. We don't want to talk about that because that's nasty. Y'all stay with me. I'm going to make my point. I might lose some members tonight. That's what's great about just having a ministry now. I don't owe anything, anybody anything but love. Now, you be honest for a minute. If there was some feller and he's addicted to the pornography and he can't stop it with the pornography, he's enslaved to it. He's watching it four, five, six hours a day and he will not stop. Would you question his level of faith unto his God? Now, you be honest. You can't judge his heart, and you wouldn't. You wouldn't judge his heart. I'm not saying that. But would you question the innermost part of his belief and his heart towards the Lord? Does he really believe? He talks about Jesus all the time, but they caught him addicted to the porn four or five hours a day. You think about that. Roseanne said he's not a believer. Lisa said, yes, I would. Louise is right. He's searching for some kind of fulfillment. He's trying to fill a void in his heart, isn't he? Isn't he trying to fill a void? Teresa said I would. Now, somebody needs to explain to me, and I'll move off the topic. I would agree with you, but somebody needs to explain to me, and then I'll move off the topic. How is someone different that looks at food porn all day who is, let's say, dangerously overweight? Let's call that more than 30 excess pounds overweight, and they're not doing anything to correct the behavior. And they're making excuses. Do you not think a man makes excuses? I used to be in Christian counseling, and I counseled a couple where he was addicted to the pornography, and it was causing problems between them. Bad problems. Rightfully so, right? But his excuse was his wife had grown cold she had become cold to him. He blamed her for his addiction. Are y'all buying that at all? Or does that make you mad? He blamed her. He wouldn't own it. But I need reasonable people here tonight as I'm running out of ways to dig deep into your heart because everybody's giving up on the hard work. Everybody's accepting obesity. So I'm trying to poignantly give you something to count to relate it to so that we snap out of it. You got to tell me in an articulate fashion how one addiction is any worse or better than the other. If we're going to doubt his belief in his Lord over his addiction, to something that causes dopamine to release in his head and fills that void for him. But we're doing the same thing with food. Can somebody explain to me what the difference is? 
If we're going to doubt his sincerity and salvation, why would we not doubt the food addict's sincerity? I'm not saying I, I doubt his sincerity, but most people would. I like what Louise said. He's got a big void in his heart. So wouldn't that hold true for us that are food addicted? Shouldn't we actually have empathy and compassion for the people that we don't anymore because we're dealing with the same thing here? It's not necessarily that he doesn't believe in God, but he's got strongholds in his life. Now, we can talk about how to eat a potato tonight. We can talk about how eating corn on the cob and an apple needs to be combined right. We can talk about that. But what good will it do us if we don't fill that void in our heart and surrender to the Lord our God? The Bible says that if we fall on the rock, we'll be broken. But if the rock falls on us, we'll be ground to powder. What's the difference? Something that's broken can be put back together. If it's ground to powder, it can't be put back together. So tonight, before we leave, if you're still struggling, I ask you, do you want to be broken before you're ground to powder? Obesity will grind you to powder. It is the leading, pornography is not the leading cause of all premature death in our country. Obesity is. And people are trying to avoid the work. They'll spend money they ain't got on shots pills, potions, surgeries, all to wind up less healthy than they were before. So tonight, as we do our review and then get into the lesson, which will it be tonight? Do you want to fall into the hands of the living God? Or do you want to continue keeping your head in the sand? Everybody with me, I love myself. I even love Big Travis. I love that boy, 300 pounds. I look at him today in my mind's eye, and I have compassion for him. He just needed a little help. Now here I stand today, a different person physically, emotionally, spiritually. Still working on it, but physically I'm different because I prayed, I fell on the rock, and I quit straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. If you're here and you want to lose weight, you will. But I can't take all the chariots and horses mentioned in the Bible and drag you to success if you haven't got a made-up mind. Amen? Let's make up that mind tonight. Do y'all remember this group last night? We come together and we said, we're going to focus on a number. And by the end of August, this 8 p.m. group, we're going to have a number that we all are going to achieve because we're going to all, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he'll be in the midst. And wh whatever we ask and touch and agree, boom, it shall be done. Kathy's right. 500 pounds. We're going to start the countdown this week. So don't forget to journal. Is everyone journaling? Now, if you're not, let it be known. Let us help you. We won't fuss at you. We know it's not a habit. We got to get it to be a habit. Anybody not journaling right now? By the way, do know that's a rhetorical question. I have an accountability sheet over here. I know exactly who's journaling. I want to see who we got to be honest. I want you to journal and trust old Travis. Can you do that for me for a month? I'm giving you the best I got. I'm giving you every tool I got, every resource I got. I'm giving you the shirt off my back, literally. 
Will you journal for old Travis for a month? So that you can see the powerful effects of pinning these things down. If you bite it, you ride it, you hog it, you log it, you nibble it, you scribble it, you drink it, you ink it. And then record that way. You can either do it once a week or every morning. I do it every morning because it doesn't, it doesn't depress me, Brenda. It doesn't bother me. I don't trust the scales. I trust Jesus. I know on the honor system, if I'm doing my best and following the program, and I trust my weekly timing chart. Them scales are a liar. But if we record our weight every day, ah, we can watch how our body reacts to food. Some days you'll have a Shibola perfect day and the weight will go up a little bit. You still lost fat. It's water and sugar, fluctuation, natural, how your body operates and works. But if you weigh once a week, they start telling the truth a little bit. If you weigh once a month, they tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth. But we can learn a lot by getting up in the morning and getting on them scales. So I need you to journal. I need you to record. You know, I was talking to somebody today and she said, uh, I don't want to tell you what my height and weight is. She won't help. And I, I said, you don't want, she said, no, I don't want to tell you. And I said, well, you have to tell me. I know where, so I know where we're at. I'm not going to judge you. She said, but I, I can't handle to hear it. That's how bad this thing is. Do y'all know where shame, guilt, and regret come from? Y'all know where shame, guilt, and regret comes from? The devil. It's not of God. God loves you. I want you to have a good quality of life. All right? So we're going to journal. Now, here's some qu quiz questions. True or false? True or false? A pound of muscle has 900 calories stored in it. That's false. 600, that's right. True or false, in order to preserve muscle, we need at least 120 grams of carbohydrate per day. That's false. In order to preserve muscle, we need essential amino acids. That's true. Valine, leucine, and isoleucine are branch chain amino acids. That's true. We call branch chain amino acids, Travis calls branch chain amino acids, gut be gone and butt be gone. That's true. True or false? Our pancreas is responsible for efficiently burning body fat. That's right. That's false. That's false. True or false? Be a liver of life and not a gallbladder. Yes, it's your liver that efficiently burns fat. True or false, your second brain, according to Travis, your second brain is your gut. That's true. True or false, if you closely adhere to Shibboleth for six months, you'll get so skinny you've got to jump around in the shower to get wet. All right, let's get to it. So we've got seven categories. Got seven categories. This is our beginner program, not our other program. So we're going to talk about the seven categories. We're gearing up to take our test, pass our test, and earn the badge tomorrow. All right. So what is category one? Let's let's through repetition, let's learn this stuff. Lean protein. What's category two?
Fibrous carbs, category three. Complex carbs are energy carbs. I call them energy carbs to help people understand the role of complex carbs. Category four, protein plus fat. Category five is fruit. Category six is superfood. Category seven is shellfish. Now, we've got two modes. We've got weight loss mode. We've actually got three modes. We've got weight loss mode, maintenance, and then we've got uh, building, a building phase, a muscle building phase. So weight loss, weight loss and a building phase where we're trying to build muscle. If I'm trying to lose weight, we've got four macronutrients. We've got protein, carbs, fat, and water. If I'm trying to lose weight, what is the most important macronutrient? Water. That's right. Water is most important. You can't live without it. What's the next most important? Protein. What's the next most important? Fat. And then finally, of course, carbs. But these are all essential nutrients in my mind. You don't want to have a lifestyle that permanently excludes any of those macronutrients. Protein per gram has four calories. Fat per gram has nine calories. Carbs has four calories. Water, zero. Protein breaks down into amino acids to feed and fuel the muscle. Protein slows down the fat bus. Protein builds the metabolism great. The, car the four calories of carbs, four per gram, this breaks down differently. It breaks down into glycogen. And glycogen elevates our blood sugar. We need glycogen. But we as a people, we consume way too much of it. And we, and we usually don't choose the whole food forms. We choose the processed forms, which makes it all the, all the much worse. For time's sake, I would recommend that this group watch today's 1030 lesson number three. If you have time, I did this same lesson, but it's different every time. And this morning it flowed really well. And we really dug around. Every class is different, but we really dug around and dug deep. And there was a lot of uh, a lot of light switches that turned on this morning. So I really recommend if you can tomorrow watch the 1030 lesson. So if our priority is weight loss, this is the prioritization of our macros. If I'm trying to build muscle, what comes first? Water, right? Water and then protein. That didn't change, but we have to flip these two because when we're building muscle, We'll need carbs not only for energy and glycogen for the muscle contractions, but to have a muscle sparing effect. So we'll need carbs and then finally fat. But they're all important. The reason I put this on the board is so that you can take a look at this and you can start understanding why I put the combinations together the way I do. This is not, I'm just trying to give you a different way to look at it. Watch this. Protein, fibrous carb, protein plus fat, superfoods, and shellfish. I'm going to put an asterisk by superfood. These macros are these uh, categories that I've circled. They're going to help you control the fat bus. 
The exception to that is your superfoods. There are some superfoods that can elevate blood sugar some, but not much because they contain lots of fiber, lots of protein, but you do have to be careful with them, right? Your protein, your fibrous carb, your protein plus fat, superfood shellfish, they're going to slow down the fat bus if you portion control them. So that means if I'm on a portion plate, if I can really control my portions, I could have any of these foods from these categories on a portion plate. Yes, we've got more than 20 combinations because some people say, how do I lose weight the fastest? And there's always some nuance that can help you lose it faster. But in general, any of the foods in these categories on a portion plate are going to be fine. Now, the reason you see me say take a category one, take a category two, is so I can get a fair portion of the thing that I want to eat. If I was practically, it's probably not practical to take a little piece of chicken, a little broccoli, a little steak, a little pinto bean, and a little shrimp. That would just be a bite of each. Does that make sense? I want to make sure that makes sense. I'm just trying to give this to you for illustrative purposes to help simplify combinations because we have to control the fat bus. Now, if I could have a little piece of chicken, a, a, a one broccoli spear, a little piece of steak, two shrimp, and uh, a couple tablespoons of pintos, that would be fine. But we have to be careful because we might want more than that. And then we went over our portion uh, component. What we've got to be careful of is these two right here, fruit and complex carb, because they will elevate blood sugar. And when we elevate our blood sugar, the pancreas releases the, uh -huh, the fat bus. And the fat bus causes appetite to go up, fat storage to take place, and efficient fat burning mode to stop for up to 48 hours. But we need them in our diet. And sometimes we just crave them. Imagine a lifelong uh, an, an entire life without fruit, without potatoes and corn. No, we don't want you to do that. I love those things. But we've got to learn how to slow down the huh, huh, the fat bus so that we can get these foods to working for us and not working against us. Somebody say amen. Brenda says, sometimes I want an apple so bad. This is a little bit off topic, but Brenda, I appreciate the question because I want to point out something. Can I ever, I want y'all to listen. Can I ever have an apple by itself again? Not on, on a perfect day. Yeah, you can have it on your holidays now, but can I do it on a perfect day? Yes. I eat fruit by itself all the time. Why do I do that? I'm in maintenance. Think about that. We, look, see if this makes sense and resonates with anybody. Deep down, we have so given up that we think that we're going to be in the diet phase, in the weight loss phase forever. How many of you don't? You, you've... Maintenance is so far-fetched to you. If you stop and think, in your mind, you're always going to have to do the weight loss phase. If you listen and stay with me, you won't have to. We'll celebrate and eat an apple together. We'll eat some watermelon together. See, an apple a day will keep the doctor away if you're in maintenance. I'd much rather, see, I am a misunderstood fella. And I know y'all have heard bad stuff about me and my program. You've heard, oh, he's he's trying to get you to eat them uh, health smart peanut butter patties. No. If you're in maintenance, I'd much rather you eat an apple by itself for a snack 
than a health smart peanut butter patty. Why don't I teach that in the weight loss phase? Because that apple won't keep the doctor away when you're already out of balance. Are you with me? So when we have these two, we've got to control our portion and we've got to control the combination. And in the weight loss phase, you never want to have more than one complex carb on that plate. And you never want to combine it with a fruit because they have different glycemic loads. So in other words, if I'm having chicken breast and green beans and I want fruit, then it goes right here. I got to control the portion. But then if I want to add a little bit of corn, I got to get rid of that fruit. I can only have one selection at a time until I get out of the weight loss mode. Does that make sense? Where you can combine and mix and match these others if you portion control, you can't do that with a three and a five. Not in the weight loss mode. We have to control it because your body can only handle, if you're going to stay in weight loss mode, your body can only handle about 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrate per eating episode. And you need to avoid carbohydrate after 4 p.m. until you get in maintenance. It's not a holiday, but you should try to avoid it. Did that make sense, everyone? Yeah, Charles said you can't have a four plus three or a four plus five. Let me show you that on the board. Let me show you what happens. By the way, if you're new, this is lesson three. We start again on Monday with lesson one. Anybody going back through the course next week or can I? do I need to retire? This may be my last group. Do I need to retire? Or do I have people going to go through it again? I had hope when I changed every life that I could retire. But I ain't changed enough lives, and I'm having to beg people to come class. Bring them, Terry. Let's help them. How are y'all feeling about the new mode of teaching? Maybe not as fun, or but do you like it? Where was I? Fruit. Four plus three, four plus five. This, true or false, that will work. That will work. That's false. Now, let's look at why in my weak way of artistry. I've got a portion plate, and I've got a steak. And I've got corn. Let's do steak and corn or steak and potato, whatever. Doesn't matter. Now watch. No, no, Ashley. Miss Ashley, we can't even put a two and make that work, can we, y'all? Mm -mm. Make sure you look at your food combination chart. Everybody gets a free program. Go to myshaboleth.com. You have a free program. Use that combination chart. Here's why this will not work. That steak, what does that steak have in it? Does it have a lot of carbs in it? True or false, a steak has five grams of carbohydrate. It doesn't have any carbs if it's real steak. But it has protein and it has fat. So the fat that's in that steak is long chain triglyceride fats. Let's compare it to a long candle wick. Now I'm not talking about a, I'm not talking about a big old porterhouse steak flopping on the side 
That's for a holiday. I'm talking about it for ladies, four to six ounces. For guys, four to eight ounces, okay? Talking about a perfect day and we're having a steak. Well, you got all these long chain triglycerides, y'all. You got all those long chain triglycerides. The protein's doing its job in preserving muscle, building your, building your metabolism, helping your brain health, okay? But you have all these fat lipids here that are ready to be stored as fat. They're already in the form of fat. They're also a great, they're also a great energy source. They begin to be used. If they burn, they start dissipating. Unless the what comes? Huh, huh. So the corn elevates blood sugar. And to keep myself from going into a diabetic coma and dying, my pancreas has to release, the fat bus has to release insulin. So here comes insulin. The fat bus. Here it comes. And it's going to pick up this fat that's not dissipating this heat fast enough. It's going to suck it up like it's in a syringe. And then it's got to plant it somewhere. And it's going to look for available fat cells that has storage capacity. And it's going to park it right there in my big butt. And I'm doing this, and I don't even know until my butt's so big. And then when you've reached max capacity in your rear end, your body has to create new fat cells because you won't stop doing it. And you can't get rid of them. They can just be minimized, shrunk. So anytime you go back to your old habits, that's why you gain it back so fast. Those fat cells are like gremlins. You're just feeding them. Stop it. This is so easy. Listen, even if you're doing the shot, if you're doing shots, pills, potions, whatever you're doing, you're still going to have to learn to eat, right? Or you'll just gain it back. Same thing with steak and fruit. Or, like, let's take it, let's do this. Watch this. Are grits approved? I know it, Brother Charles. It hurts my heart. Grits are approved. Let's do this. Can we do whole eggs and grits? That's a four and a three. We'd have that same effect. But could I do egg whites, a spinach egg white omelet, a one and a two, and have the grits? Yeah. There's nothing you can't have, but it's knowing and understanding how to slow down that insulin provocation. So weekly, monthly, yearly, you get those insulin levels down. That's growth hormone, fat storage hormone, and I know that's what's holding you back if you're here. You may not know it. You may not think it's that big a deal. You may think that weight loss is just a calorie thing. You are incorrect. You must control insulin. You must follow the Shibola Shield or something that promotes those same principles. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Any questions for me tonight? You can be off topic, on topic, whatever you need tonight. Please watch that video from this morning. Uh, I feel like it really, just the comments I received after class, it really turned some light bulbs on. Anybody?
I'm not sure, Roseanne. I know it will be by tomorrow. Um, I know it will be by tomorrow, but. Way to go, finish two wows. Uh, you go to our video library. Let's go, I'll just go on and look. We can see if Larry's got it in there. It usually takes for 40, excuse me, 24 hours. At least that's what she's tasked with. You know, she does her best with it. And uh, let's go to the video library. All we have to do is go over here and look. Where's my video library? Right there it is. Video library. It's already in there. Right there it is. Good job, Lara. See, recently added videos. There's more content on this website, wellness content, than any website on the planet Earth. Anybody else before we go tonight? Any questions or comments? How may I assist? Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody. Yes, we are keeping up with weight loss from the journal. We didn't have enough people enter their weight today, but we'll get an automatic calculation. Feel free to go on and tell us what you're losing. But uh, if you're logging in the website and in, in putting your weight, it'll automatically calculate that. I just, it wasn't enough data after one day. Good job, Sheila. Any questions or comments before we go? Everybody satisfied? We will have class, Lord willing, tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Uh, while I've got your attention, do note that uh, Shibboleth will be going through some pretty radical changes. But what we're committed to doing now as we move toward this out of necessity, um, very soon we won't be able to chat all day on the website. We won't have enough staffing. So the way to get your questions answered is to come to these sessions. So um, we will keep trying to reply. You know, we do basically everything under cost for free. We want to make a way for every common person to get the help they need. But we still know that a big part of that is support. But that's going to shift quick. Um, we're going to do our best to reply. We get anywhere from 700 to 1500 emails and messages a day and uh, people asking everything from can I eat a mighty muffin with egg whites or can I have chicken with strawberries you know all kind it's all day but that's why I'm committed to making up for the lack of us being able to talk all day with uh, these live classes uh, I do them at I'm up at 4 a.m. And I usually don't go to bed till about 11 p.m. Uh, you know, I was at 1030 this morning. I'm here tonight. I'm going to go live a minimum of twice a day 
so that I can answer your questions. So even though we live in an instant gratification society, hopefully it's better than having to pay what the program should be worth. Uh, you save a lot of money, but you know, let's say that you have a question at, at lunchtime and you can't get us, then can you wait till eight or can you send in your question and let me answer it here in the live and watch the recording? That's the direction we're going to have to go. Uh, we're not finding the support that we need to maintain what our clients are used to. So Sasha and I are adjusting because we feel ministers, we're not a business, so we're not going out of business. It's no different than if we were uh, man, pastoring a large church and it's gotten small. So that's what we're going to do, as I've always told you that we would. We're going to minister. Uh, and I'll do the best I can to have gainful occupation around the time, these times. Does that make sense, everybody? But I need you to be patient with us. They're still going to try to answer all 1,500 questions, but it won't be possible. So we don't want anybody to feel left out. That's why I'm going live Monday through Thursday, twice a day. I've gotten a job now, so I will be working uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we'll see how that goes for a while. And I will be live at 10.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. to make sure we're helping. We don't need any people feeling sorry. We're not going out of business because we're not a business. We've never operated like a business. We've operated as a ministry. Y'all are the congregation members. It's up to y'all to take care of Shibboleth at the level that you want to take care of it. Rita, is there a way to restart the clock rather than try to remember all the details of the last three days? I feel over. Sure. We're going to start again Monday, Rita. Is that what you're asking? We'll start and go through it again on Monday. Rita, did you get a text message from me today about this class? If so, all you got to do is watch for those texts and register for the class. We'll start a new group and go through lesson one through four next week, too. Everybody's welcome. Every willing and wanting heart. This is exactly how I started 20 years ago, just giving my heart the best of, of, to the best of my ability, except for the programs a lot better. I didn't have a website. And uh, I just want to love on people and help people and owe you nothing but love Monday through Thursday each week, two times a day. Yeah, you can change your start date for sure. Yep. You can restart your journal date in your profile. I don't have a helper with me, so bear with me as I – usually I would have one of my helpers reach out to you. So I go into, been a while since I did this. You go to your profile right here, Rita, profile. And then we're looking for our start date. Let's see if it's in here. It's been a while since I did this. Journal start date right here. See journal start date? So I'm going to edit, and I'm going to mark my journal start date, the day that I want to start my new Shibboleth journey, right here. Does that make sense, Rita? Everybody see that? Now, that wipes out your history and lets us know that you're starting fresh and new. Resets the system. Let me know if that answered your question. Anybody else? 
I'll go through that one more time. Okay. Now I'm not on a mobile phone, may be a little different. Profile. I edited this. I clicked the little edit button that was at the top of this page, and then it goes journal start date right there. All right, everybody, we love you in the Lord. Don't forget, use your free link. Tell people about the free course. Bring them with you. It's easier to, and a lot more fun to do Shibboleth with others, isn't it? Have some fun with it. We're having fun. Did y'all have fun tonight? Even though it started off with me going, obesity is the worst thing ever. It's fun, isn't it? It's fun to get focused and lose weight. Y'all can help. How can we help Shibboleth? You can post in social media your free link or invite people to myshiboleth.com and tell them it's free. <laughs> it's, we're just loving on people and helping people. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good night. God bless you. Remember that big 500. That big 500. All right, y'all. Good night, everybody.